Tappy activated. Hi, my bite-sized friends. Today I'll transfer crucial data to you. All you need to know about L2s. Basic information retrieved. Ethereum's main network, layer one, is where transactions are processed and smart contracts run. It's secure and reliable, but it can get crowded, leading to slow transactions and high fees. To solve this, Layer 2 solutions were created. L2 helps Ethereum scale to support more apps like DeFi, gaming, and NFTs by reducing costs and easing congestion. Solutions like rollups, state channels, and validiums make Ethereum more efficient and user-friendly. A new info influx. L1 and L2 work together through bridging. It lets users move assets like Ether between the two. L2 processes transactions off-chain, bundles them up, and sends a summary back to L1. This setup keeps Ethereum decentralized, secure, and scalable. Right now, over $30 billion is locked in Ethereum's L2 solutions. Holy motherboard, that's a lot! They're designed for applications where the same participants frequently interact. State channels allow users to perform multiple transactions off-chain and only record the final result on the Ethereum mainnet. Huh, it would be useful for our robo-community. The process of using state channels has three steps. First, participants lock funds or state on L1 in a multi-signature smart contract. This contract ensures that funds are securely held while off-chain transactions occur. Hmm, this is like an antivirus for us. Then, off-chain interactions occur. Participants can exchange signed transactions directly. These transactions update the state of the channel without involving L1. For instance, two users might trade small amounts back and forth, adjusting their balances with each transaction. None of these interactions are broadcast to the blockchain. After finishing transactions, participants submit the final state of the channel to L1. The smart contract verifies the final balances and distributes funds accordingly. The explanation protocol activated. Among the various L2 technologies, rollups are the most widely used. They work by rolling up or bundling many transactions off-chain and submitting them to L1 in batches. It reduces the load on the main blockchain and cuts transaction costs, at the same time preserving Ethereum's security. There are several types of rollups. Boosting your crypto IQ. Optimistic rollups assume that all transactions in a batch are valid by default. Instead of verifying each transaction individually, transactions are processed off-chain and bundled together. A batch is then submitted to L1, and users are given a challenge period to dispute any invalid transactions. If no disputes arise, the batch is considered valid. Let's plug into the advantages of optimistic rollups. They're quite simple to implement, compatible with Ethereum's existing smart contracts, and can process transactions quickly. At the same time, the need for a challenge period means withdrawals from L2 can take longer. These rollups use advanced cryptographic proofs, known as zero knowledge proofs, to ensure that off chain transactions are valid. These proofs provide mathematical guarantees without requiring trust. Turning on clarifying mode, instead of assuming transactions are valid, ZK rollups generate and submit a validity proof, which is a compact cryptographic summary that L1 can quickly verify for each batch of transactions. What my processors approve is that ZK rollups offer near-instant finality. It means transactions are confirmed much faster. They also provide enhanced privacy and stronger security compared to optimistic rollups. 
On the other hand, ZK rollups are more complex and expensive to build, and generating ZK proofs requires significant computational resources. They are similar to zero-knowledge rollups, but with one key difference. They store transaction data off-chain instead of on Ethereum. By doing so, Validiums can achieve much higher scalability, as they are not constrained by L1's data storage limits. Keep it on your memory boards that Validium still use zero-knowledge proofs to ensure transaction validity, but the data itself is stored by a trusted set of validators or external providers. This makes them ideal for use cases like gaming, NFTs, or enterprise applications, where decentralization isn't the top priority. An example of Validium technology is StarkX which powers several decentralized exchanges and applications. It offers high throughput and low fees. While often grouped with L2 solutions, sidechains differ significantly. A sidechain is an independent blockchain that operates alongside Ethereum, connected to it via a two-way bridge. Time to decode the details. Users lock assets on Ethereum's L1, and equivalent tokens are issued on the sidechain. Transactions occur entirely on the sidechain, which uses its own consensus mechanism, like proof of authority or delegated proof of stake. When users want to return to L1, they send their tokens back across the bridge and the locked assets are released on Ethereum. One of the main advantages of sidechains is that they're highly customizable and can handle a large number of transactions at a low cost. But unlike true L2 solutions, sidechains don't have Ethereum security. It makes them less secure and more centralized. That's all the information I wanted to share on L2 solutions. Like and share this video and subscribe to stay with me. Tappy deactivated.